What occurs off the pitch is just one aspect of sports. Many stories take place behind the scenes, and although they may occur after the final buzzer has sounded, they are still full of action. Let's go and find out some of the wildest sports stories ever told. Catfishing scandal involving Monty Teo. If you were a sports fan in 2013, this was by far the craziest tale. According to the ESPN press room, Monty Teo, a linebacker for Notre Dame, is at the center of a heartbreaking story. It seems that on the same day, his grandma and girlfriend both passed away within a few hours of one another. Later, Deadspin found that the girlfriend, Lene Kakua, was a catfishing scam and never ever existed. Teo made it to the NFL and played for the Chargers and Saints for seven seasons, but the scandal will always be associated with his name. Doc Ellis in his absurdly flawless game. One of the most absurd and nearly impossible sporting events ever, whether it be in baseball or any other sport. According to Sports Illustrated, Doc Ellis of the Pittsburgh Pirates threw a no-hitter on June 12, 1970, while under the influence of acid, also known as lysergic acid diethylamide. Ellis originally related the incident in 1984, telling how he mistakenly believed Jimi Hendrix was at the plate using a guitar as a bat and that Richard Nixon was the home plate umpire at various stages in the game. It was Ellis' first and only career no-hitter, and as far as we are aware, the first occasion a pitcher has thrown a no-hitter while under the influence of LSD. The altercation in the locker room involving Gilbert Arenas and Javaris Crittenton. It would be an understatement to say that in 2009, tensions erupted between Gilbert Arenas and Javaris Crittenton, teammates for the Washington Wizards. According to USA Today, Crittenton and Arenas and teammate wizard JaVale McGee got into an argument over a card game while on the team plane. When Crittenton said he would shoot Arenas if he threatened to set his car on fire while inside, Arenas countered that he would bring the gun. Arenas carried out his threat by entering the locker room with four firearms two days later. In response, Crittenton produced his own weapon. Thankfully, there were no bullets fired and no one was hurt during the diffused altercation. Arenas and Crittenton both had season-long suspensions and were charged with crimes in Washington. Daring Marine Rescue by Lawrence Lemieux a medal in the Olympics is one of the few things that amateur athletes value more than anything else, but Lawrence Lemieux gladly and correctly missed his chance in 1988. Ozzy claims that the Canadian sailor saw a capsized boat with only one crew member in sight while he was racing in 35 knot conditions off the coast of Seoul. Lemieux withdrew from the competition in order to save the Singaporean sailor, find the rudder, and correct the boat. Lemieux came in 22nd place, but he received the IOC's Pierre de Coubertin Medal for Pure Sportsmanship, a distinction that has previously only been awarded a few times. The suicide jumper is saved by Muhammad Ali. However, this incident from 1981 brought Muhammad Ali's selflessness to light. He was a larger-than-life character and a skilled storyteller who supported his claims both inside and outside of the ring. The three-time heavyweight champion was informed by a friend that a troubled man was perched nine floors up on a Los Angeles office building fire escape and was threatening to jump, according to the New York Times. Ali fearlessly climbed the fire escape to the building, leant out to the man, and took him inside. The two climbed into Ali's Rolls Royce and drove to the neighborhood VA hospital. The legend of Muhammad Ali just gained another incredible moment. Michael Jordan smokes a victory cigar before the game. A large part of what made Michael Jordan so famous was his unmatched competitiveness and gamesmanship, which is the subject of innumerable stories. One such incident happened in 1995-96, during the Chicago Bulls' incredible 72-10 season. Chris Webber, a standout forward for the Washington Bullets, reportedly recalls seeing Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen smoking a cigar while perched on Jordan's Ferrari prior to the third playoff game. It was almost like, I lit the cigar, as Webber described it. Already, I'm having a party. You guys entering the floor tonight is only a formality. Talk about a downer. Charles Barkley flings a guy out the window. In addition to being a fierce defender on the court, Charles Barkley wasn't afraid to stand up for himself off it either. According to a 1997 South Florida Sun Sentinel article, the power forward for the Houston Rockets at the time threw a man through an Orlando Bar's glass window. When Barkley was signing autographs, 20-year-old Jorge Lugo yelled profanities and tossed a cup of ice at him, striking a woman in Barkley's group. To his credit, Barkley accepted full responsibility for what he accomplished and later told reporters, let there be no question. I'm going to whip your asterisk asterisk if you trouble me. I stood my ground. He earned what he received. David Beckham is injured by Sir Alex Ferguson. A coach harming one of his own players.
That is not what you might anticipate hearing from the Premier League and two of the biggest names in football, but rather from a lower-level football league. Following a defeat to Arsenal, Manchester United manager Sir Alex Ferguson rushed into the locker room and kicked a boot, which flung through the air and smacked David Beckham in the face, according to the Evening Standard. The top midfielder, who required two sutures, was clearly incensed. The incident only served to exacerbate their already strained relationship. Fritz Peterson and Mike Kekic switch families. Press conferences typically aren't all that entertaining, but the ones on March 4, 1973, stood out from all of the others. Pitchers Mike Kekic and Fritz Peterson of the New York Yankees announced a pair of swaps involving their spouses, kids, and dogs, according to the Palm Beach Post. Years of friendship between the two families finally led to the two pitchers falling in love with each other's wives. Mike Kekic and Marilyn Peterson separated up before being married, but Peterson has been happily married to Suzanne Kekic since 1974. There was only one definite winner, as with most exchanges. Burner Twitter accounts for Brian Colangelo. Hardcore nobody anticipated that the president of an NBA franchise would be one of those obsessive social media users who occasionally create, burner, identities to defend themselves against the social media mob. According to a revelation by SB Nation, the 76ers, president of basketball operations, Brian Colangelo, was connected to a number of Twitter accounts in 2018. The accounts revealed private details about several Philadelphia players while also defending Colangelo's choices. Initially, Colangelo claimed to be unaware of everything. However, after an investigation, Colangelo admitted to having one burner account, and his wife Barbara Bottini admitting to managing three of them. Colangelo was nonetheless compelled to quit in shame. Mike Danton plans a murder and then intervenes to save a life. Mike Danton's life has completed a circle. The former NHL player was detained in 2004 for attempting to plan a murder, according to Sports Illustrated. After serving more than five years in jail, Danton was granted parole and set out on a nomadic career through collegiate hockey and European professional leagues. Then, in 2011, a teammate struck his head on the ice while competing for Swedish third division club OR, and he began to have seizures. Danton, who was trained in first aid when he was incarcerated, jumped in to save his teammate from choking on his own tongue, maybe saving his life. 2011 Rugby World Cup Scandal Involving England the incident involving England's rugby squad at the 2011 World Cup raises many questions. According to The Guardian, a YouTube video showed six players imitating rugby techniques and participating in inebriated horseplay at a bar in Queenstown, New Zealand. When you consider that team captain Mike Tyndall had recently wed Zara Phillips, the Queen's granddaughter, it doesn't sound so horrible that he flirted with a blonde woman at the bar. Vince Wilco assists a victim of an automobile accident. Certainly, Vince Wilfork had a busy day in January 2015. According to USA Today, the former defensive lineman spotted an automobile accident with an overturned vehicle while going home with his wife after the New England Patriots won the AFC Championship. Wilfork went inside to assist the woman and used one hand to help pull her out. Given his great football career, it makes reasonable that he didn't freak out in a stressful circumstance. Snake discovered in the Blazers' locker room. 2014's AT&T Center in San Antonio provided a hostile reception for the Portland Trail Blazers. A few hours prior to tip-off of Game 2 of the Western Conference semifinal matchup against the Spurs, according to ESPN, players discovered a snake in the team's locker room. Thomas Robinson reacted by yelling and leaping, about 5 feet high and 20 feet back, claiming he had only ever seen snakes on the Discovery Channel. I won't lie, I was afraid. Okay, that's fine. Albert Bell's corked bat is hidden by Jason Grimsley. This incident actually occurred, despite the fact that it sounds more like a movie plot. According to the Columbus Dispatch, White Sox manager Gene Lamont requested that the umpires seize Indian slugger Albert Bell's bats on July 15, 1994, after receiving information that the bats were unlawfully corked. In a spectacular bid to save his teammate, Cleveland pitcher Jason Grimsley wriggled 100 feet inside a fake ceiling in Chicago's Comiskey Park to swap out the illegal bat for a legal one. The umpires caught on to the ploy since the official bat belonged to teammate Paul Sorrento. Bell was benched for 10 games. Dennis Rodman and Kim Jong-un become close friends. Dennis Rodman is one of sport's most divisive individuals, but is, befriending a dictator, truly divisive? It turns out that the answer is yes. According to ABC News, the former NBA power forward is North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's favorite player and was invited to Pyongyang in 2013. 
Rodman accepted and traveled with three Harlem Globetrotters players and a handful of vice journalists. Rodman returned to North Korea multiple times after that, referring to Kim as a friend for life. CJ. Leslie helps a fan in a wheelchair. Against Duke in 2013, North Carolina State forward CJ. Leslie gave his everything on the court for the Wolfpack and his supporters. Leslie, according to USA Today, played a key role in NC State's eight-point triumph over the then-no. One Blue Devils. Leslie also played the hero when the crowd rushed the court to celebrate. Will Privet, a devoted Wolfpack supporter, was pushed onto the floor but ended up getting lost in the crowd. He was safely held by Leslie away from the crowd after she took him up. Leslie will always remember that moment even though he never made it to the NBA. Being Marshawn Lynch means nothing else. It's extremely impossible to choose just one Marshawn Lynch story, but this endearing one from 2015 is one of our favorites. He visited teammate Ricardo Lockett, who had sustained a neck injury that would ultimately end his career, in a Dallas hospital, according to the Seattle Times. Lynch made the room's inevitably depressing atmosphere lighter by cheering everyone up and telling jokes. Finally, Lockett had to utter the words, bro, you're going to kill me. I've yet to have surgery. Beast Mode garners a lot of attention for his press conference antics and behind-the-scenes mischief, but he went above and above for his teammates. Thank you for watching. Please do subscribe for more information. Please do support us.